C Jack here, and welcome to the C Jack Reviews. I'm your host. Today, we're going to be reviewing an anime that introduced me to anime in the first place Ninja Scroll. So lean back, relax, and hit that subscribe button and enjoy the ride. Come and get me what? Little did I know That the law was riding with me The dark, the light uh, My heart, uh, the fight uh, The wrong, uh, the right uh, It's gone I, 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 Come and get me what? Little did I know That the law was riding with me The dark, the light uh, My heart, uh, the fight uh, The wrong, uh, the right uh, It's gone uh, I, I So, Ninja Scroll. This was the first anime I ever set my eyes on. It actually opened up my eyes to how Western culture differs from actual uh, Eastern culture, which is in Japan. I absolutely loved it. Uh, the color saturation, the artist detail, the plot, all of these things lacked in the early 90s when I was growing up with any kind of animation in America that was coming up, short of G.I. Joe, Transformers, Robotech, Thundercats. Okay, there's a small list, but a lot of these cartoons were actually influenced and drawn and written in Japan. They just so happened to be dubbed in English. That's where it makes the difference. But before we continue, I would like to point out your boy, in case you guys missed the announcement, Comic-Con, oh, well, too late now, Comic-Con San Diego tickets. Your boy in late July will be going to Comic Con San Diego. Any of my subscribers in San Diego from July to well, the end of the month of July, I will be out there. Stop by and say hi to your boy. I haven't determined if I'm going to be live or not, but uh, this is my first trip to the very first San Diego Comic Con for myself. I got invited to a panel. Hopefully it works out well. So stop by and check me out. If you're new to the channel, hit that share, comment, subscribe button and hit that bell if you've been a subscriber for some time. Also, support the channel by hitting this QR code. All right, so enough of other plugs and promos and whatnot. Um, let's start with Ninja Scroll. So our story begins with a protagonist. Our story begins with a protagonist named Jube Kiwagami. A wandering Ronin vagabond. He serves, he used to serve a master, but his story wasn't completely clear into how long did he serve with him, or rather, if he actually felt like he wanted to be on his own as a Ronin warrior, just no pun intended, uh, a blade for hire, which was very common in the Edo period of Japan. Around give or take the timeline, might have been 17, late 1700s, early 1800s. And, um, this guy doesn't want to, he's out for himself. He's a mercenary, but he's a mercenary with a conscience. You know, his character I can relate to because he'll do what's right. He'll do what needs to be done for the right amount of price, but he won't do anything, but his moral compass will corrupt him. I like that. Kind of reminds me of somebody else. 
So he continues to wander around the countryside and whatnot, and he get you know he gets wrapped up saving this young woman named Tegetto. Now, let me not put the horse before the carriage. She's a ninja woman. Onto her story, it'll intertwine in just a moment. Tegetto was interesting to me because she wanted to prove herself as a woman warrior, which you know it was frowned upon back in that time if Japan that females can't fight. But she wanted to prove herself outside of being a poison taster. We'll touch on that in a minute. But she actually has really good skills. Anyway, there was a mission that this guy right here named Hanzo was organizing because there have been some disturbances in the nearby villages right outside their regime. And they go to investigate. Mind you, this is only the first five minutes. The plot gets right in. You know who the characters are, the base, the wandering samurai, the credits come in. And you see this huge boomerang sword, easily like 12 feet in diameter width, chopping people left and right. There's a bunch of samurais that were hopping the tree to tree, gets completely decapitated by this giant boomerang sword. And it gets caught by this huge titan rock skin that looks like the thing on, you know, basically with a samurai version of them to sigh. This mountain of power completely decimates easily about 12 to 15 ninja warriors. And basically he's the um, the seven, seven devils in Kimon's muscle. And of course, uh, this, <laughs> this deviant, this predator, both sexual and hunter wise, was trying to, you know, obviously have his way with Tegeto. Hanzo tries to save her, but unfortunately he fails miserably and has his complete arms ripped off, blood and gore. And mind you, this is younger version of me. We're talking like 1999 version of me. You know, anime barely knocked on the door stateside. This dude is literally drinking this dude's blood as if it was like a sippy straw, you know, and looking at her like, you next. And of course he captures her. She tries to make a break for it. The guy uses a boomerang sword, chops a tree down, catches it with one hand. For a lumbering like ox, this guy has a lot of skill, not just strength, but skill. Usually people like this sacrifice skill for power if you really think about fighting and stuff. Anyway, how our hero comes into play, Jubei. <laughs> you know, Tasai was trying to have his way with her, you know, and um, Jubei was like, hey, listen, this is not cool in his own way. He was asking for directions. He tells him to piss off. Right. And short version is the guy warned him twice. He said, don't you have regrets running away? And Jubei, you know, I wasn't comfortable like that yet. Jubei was like, no, I was worrying about your skin. Yeah. You know, it can't be hard everywhere. Pretty mo clever move. Throws a ninja dart into his eye. Everything else was rock solid, but his eyes. Rescues to ghetto. Tasai is in hot pursuit. Mad as hell. And only to be stopped by... Yurihamu, Yurihamu Shijimo, uh, I think that's the name, honestly. If I butcher it, Yurihamu, which is Gamma, the main protagonist of this, right-hand man. He tells him to stop. You must give this up. It's basically your own fault for being a freaking sexual deviant. You know, Tasai does not handle the loss well. He's like, okay, whatever. So in the trees, we have Dakuman. He's observing what's going on. He's like, you know what? I got a mission to maintain. I can use these two. So in the meantime, you know, she was like, hey, listen, I appreciate you saving my life. I understood that you were looking for directions, unless that was subterfuge. Your village that you're looking for is that way. And Jubei was like, hey, you're welcome for the rescue. I'll go this way. So Tegeto was already embarrassed because this proves how vulnerable that she was as a woman, which defeats the purpose of her trying to prove herself as a warrior. And she presses on. They separate and go their separate ways. And if I'm remembering correctly, the next scene was basically Jubei taking a walk, seeing a random horse, you know, whatever. And Tasai is not letting this go. He didn't handle getting his eye punctured and ruining his booty call too well. So he punches the dude through a wall, drags him into the wall, and then punches him through the wall, brick and all, like it was made out of cardboard. And keep in mind, the animation style of the old school manga stuff back in the early 90s, flawless. It was hand drawn, no CGI, maybe some special effects here and there, but they were minimal. You know, his 
posture, his breathing, his every frame was magnificent back in the day. And uh, anyway, Tsai, I was just observing this. Tsai was like, you're going the wrong way. The way to hell is this way. <laughs> you know, he starts punching Jubei through a concrete, looks like lantern's post. And then he just tosses him like he was trash. Jubei dealt with this like it was a simple bar of misunderstanding. Like, okay, you got it out of your system. Let's just call it quits. One of us is going to be killed if this keeps up, right? And Tosai was like, yes, one of us. You know, coldest line in the whole series. And Jubei was like, look, dude, I'm not in the mood. I will fuck you up. And so Tosai doesn't take this seriously. So he throws his boomerang sword at Jubei again. Jubei tries to cut him. Obviously, his skin was super tough while the sword was out of his hand. He obviously dodges the attack. And Tosai was like, huh. You know, my super skin, you can't penetrate it, blah, 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 you know, banter, you know, how they, villains, like in Invincibles, they love the monologue. Except there was one problem. This time, Tasai's skin started to peel and crack. Remember, he tried to have his way to Ghetto, and to Ghetto and a double-edged sword, she's a poison tester, so she's immune to most poisons, but the problem with this is, Nobody can make love to her. Nobody can touch her. It's kind of like the extreme version of uh, what Poison Ivy has from Batman the Animated Series. She can't give childbirth due to her super immune system. Anyway, so his skin starts crumbling. Jubei was like, huh, look what's wrong, monster. Your skin's starting to crumble. He gets pissed off and throws one more swing at his you know, giant boomerang sword one more time. Except this time, Jubei was ready for him, and he slices his fingers so he can't catch it. The blade hits <laughs> Tasai's head. Jubei was too close and he was about to like eat it because Tasai grabbed him by the face. He's about to use the blade as a weapon as look at the blood and gore and the colors. Like, you know, they didn't spare no um, limitations on animated films back then. There was, you gotta remember, this is a, t a time of animated deviance like uh, uh, heavy metal or. Um, I don't care, uh, Eon Flux, where they didn't care about body detail like that. You had to watch it late night in order to get this really grimy stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you guys are born in the 80s or even the 90s for that matter. Anyway, Tasai dies, but not before leaving a hint to the other seven devils, excuse me, six devils now of Kimon. You know, the um, the next one up is um, Benis, but, uh, Benis, Benisato, Benisato. I'm trying to get my Japanese names correctly. So she noticed it, she looked at it, and Tasai, remember he grabbed Jubei by the face. It actually left an imprint who killed me, which is ingenious. This is stuff I'm talking about. So while this is happening, Jubei was, was trying to take a bath, and uh, Benisato was joining him in the jacuzzi, you know, in the hot, natural hot springs, which I'm envying, by the way. It must have felt comfortable as hell. So... Benisato was in the pool, like, going somewhere, stranger. Um, I'm just going north. You know, he just wants to be left alone. That's the thing about Jubei. I just want to be left alone. He's like, oh, you don't say. You know, it can be dangerous around these parts or whatever, right? And Jubei was getting his sword in slow-mo, like, wait, you don't say. Well, good thing I have my sword handy. You know what I mean? Just getting ready. Let me point out the art here. Benisato had a bad frame, like the huge body tattoo going down her back. Magnifique. And, you know, and some of these female villains, they just, oh my God. Anyway, so Benisato tried her hand to kill Jubei, but it wasn't, if it wasn't for this pervert old monk named Dakuan, who actually saves him from Benisato, Jubei would have ate it right there. And just, you know, she was using some kind of snake hypnotic spell, and he was falling closer and closer to losing it in the amnesia a dart at uh, Jubei just to snap him out of it. Like, it's some kind of weird trance, and he, of course, uh, tried to kill the snake lady, but it was like, ah, yes, this is my impersonation of Dabiwan, the old guy who works for the government. He's like, ah, yes, you're not killing that one. That's a cast-off skin. You know, my impersonation is pretty good. Thank you. And so he's like, what do you want, old man? He's like, nothing. How would you like to make more money than you can even imagine through working through me? Jubei's like, dude, I don't do that kind of work anymore. He's like, really? You don't say... And so he throws another blade at Jubei and it, and no, he actually, he stabs him with it. What, no, he threw the blade. I'm trying to remember this right off verbatim. I've seen this movie a hundred times. So I'm like, and it hits Jubei and he was like, oh, well too bad because this, um, 
Chinese star? No, it's not really Chinese. It isn't Japanese. Throwing star, dagger, knife, pixel. Shuriken. Wow. This shuriken actually had poison. He's like, this shuriken has poison on it. Now you have to do what I say. You want the antidote within 24 hours. Jubei thought he was smart, gets out, <laughs> and his and his speedo uh, toga and all. He's like, there. And he took it and he like put it in the old man. He's like, now you're just as poisoned as I am. Ah, oh, you have a lot to learn about deception. I threw that hellish thing away. So he gets frustrated, throws the old man in the lake. He was like, okay, I guess I don't have a choice to uh, work for you. When I was watching this with my cousin, Ivern, I thought it was some serious irony there. He was like, hey, my name is Takawan. He's like, damn it, you bastard. He's like, ah, oh, my name is Takawan. Let's be friends. You just blackmailed me to work for you. You poisoned me and I have 24 hours to get the mission done or I'm dead. And you want to be friends? I'll, okay, whatever. So our story continues with... So the old man and Jubei decide to team up reluctantly, mind you, and continue to proceed on their mission. Now, Jubei is being debriefed by Dakuan in regards to who their target is and who is investigating. The seven devils of Kimon, uh, led by Gamma. And Jubei was like, what? It can't be Gamma. My previous encounters with him, I send him off to hell already. Ah, but Gamma has the ability to be reincarnated. And Jubei was like, damn. So maybe he might be possibly alive already. So the old man and Jubei decided to go ahead and just start looking around for clues, look for villages, that kind of thing, to see where they can pick up where Gamma's trail left off. The old man falls down in this really bad mist and fog. And Jubei was like, where the hell is this guy gone now? And so <laughs> funny thing is, the guy with the blade, um, Yutsu, Yutsu Maju, oh God, Yutsumo Jira, this cool guy, he's not quite a ninja, but he's more of like an assassin type, tries to kill the old man, Dakuban, and uh, he dodges this blade chain technique. And more importantly, he has a shadow possession technique. This dude was doing shadow possession before it was even a thing, like this guy over here. Okay. And so Dakiwan decided to turn into a damn tree, you know, a little branch, you know, just he got naked. It was all it was cool as hell, like all kind of new jitsu, taijitsu, te kenjitsu techniques, you know, and it's refreshing because I was still not fond of this. I was barely out of high school when this dropped. Meanwhile, Jubei walks in straight into a trap and, you know, poison lady, snake lady. This time has not one, not two, but an entire nest of snakes and coats Jubei all over the place. And he was like, how many of you are there? She asked. And Jubei's like, you, there's an army of us. You'll see, you know, there's not enough snakes for each one of them. You lie. And here comes to the rescue to ghetto. So she's like, get rid of all the snakes, get rid of them. So throw it to her neck, all that stuff. So she gets rid of all the snakes. She's like, now you tell me, where is your headquarters at? And of course, the lady, you know, was about to start spilling the beans because there's no cast off skin this time. This time she gets electrocuted by uh, Yura Harmo. And uh, you will find out who that is very shortly. And uh, loose ends, loose lips, get loose clips. DMX once said, or was it 50? Forgot which. Anyway, they tried to follow the little electric line that killed her and it dissipated. So the trail goes cold. Meanwhile, Jubei was trying to do the right thing because Togedo got bit by a snake on her thigh right before, you know, she got killed. She's like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, you idiot. I'm trying to suck the poison out. She's like, dude, I'm immune to poison. Don't worry about it. Anyway, we're even now. So stay out of my way. Not so fast. That one thinks that you two should be allies. We're all on the same team. We should start hunting these prey together. Reluctantly, Togedo agrees considering her entire ninja clan was decimated. And then Jubei was like, what is her problem? He's like, you don't see it? The ninja girl's immune to any poison anyone decides to use against her. And he was like, oh, okay, you know, it was good to know. Fast forwarding from night to daytime. So the Southern Devils don't like the fact, and this was brilliant. It wasn't just one-on-one -on -one action here. The Southern Devils got tired of somebody hunting their own. So Yusumaru, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the B guy. Mutsurari and um, 
and I'm trying to think Benestato. They're all team up and you know, they're all hanging around. And I forgot the fourth one, damn it. The explosive expert. Anyway, they got tired of dealing with Jubei and the rest of the crew's shit. So what they ended up doing was they ambushed them right when they were inside of a lake and whatever. The B guy comes out first, tries to kill Jubei in the water. And Togeto has this really awesome technique where I, it was a swarm of bees. He controls bees, which is a horrible way to go. Countless bees. So they retreat. Togeto has this formula that's built in, I guess, some powder or some kind of rose petals that obviously dissipates or and, and confuses and it's kind of act like an antitoxin, you know, or a nerve toxin. Uh, and makes the bees go to sleep without killing them, you know, and I heard there are such flowers like lavender that rejects insects, you know, I use it all the time in my own house, whatever, and, but I didn't know it's anything that potent, I've been doing some research on that, and that's actually pretty, a real thing, just not as potent as the anime, anyway, meanwhile, you know, uh, Taki one was like, ninja girl, you have to keep the bees at bay until Jubei kills them, you know, obviously the guy who had a hunchback, had a hive in his back, and all this stuff, Jubei makes quick work of him. The guy was built funny, draws him into the water. The dude didn't actually die right away. He had a throat needle. I would like, it spits out a needle. I would love to know how that technique even works. So the, here's the thing. They all, it was four against three, their advantage. They tried to go after him one by one though. That's where it didn't make any sense to me, but whatever. It wouldn't make the movie half as good, I guess. So Jubei takes him out. The next ninja or opponent was the blind samurai. I've heard legends of a person like this. Otsu, oh, I'm gonna try to do this right. Yuta Sur Moju <laughs> UM, the blind samurai named UM. I have got to pronunciate my Japanese properly. Anyway, this character was awesome. He had no special techniques. He just used his other senses to actually heighten his awareness around him. Jubei had an excellent strategy. But first, uh, the excellent strategy was the fact that, you know, uh, the explosive expert tried to use uh, Hanza towards his advantage and actually tried to go up against uh, the rest of the crew by putting them low, lacing them up with explosives. And to get a stupid ass, should have known it was a trap. The guy's arms were just ripped apart an earlier scene ago. Like, what the hell are you thinking? Falls into a trap, almost blows up, falling off a cliff in the blind samurai with some kind of code of honor, I guess, saves them. And I was like, okay, I can see that. Jubei had the awesome idea of actually running into a bunch of trees. And the blind samurai knew right away. He's like, you think this forest is going to help you? <laughs> you know, pump his laugh, whatever. So this dude had, I think he was one of the weakest members of the Seven Devils, but he was like one of the deadliest. Jubei couldn't beat him one-on-one -on -one if he tried. And he tried to use every ninja trick that he could, but it did to no avail. And you would not believe how this dude actually beat him. It was up to Togeto. Like she had a death wish. She had no idea she could beat this dude. So she didn't care. She just felt like her code of honor was fucked with. And she wanted to actually try to pay back the favor what was going on with Jubei. So at the same time, she had this ninja blade. And you know what? It took me a few times after watching this the first time to actually try to understand what happened. But the, there's a small mid-sized dagger about this big in diameter. It's not a long blade, but it's a basic blade. And a lot of women carry it back when they were using it as tools when they defend themselves during the, uh, the, uh, the Edo period. And so short version is there was actually a blade stuck in the bamboo. Uh, Jubei dodged one attack. There was no way he was going to survive the other one coming from the, a blind samurai. The blind samurai comes with an overhead strike, hits to Gettle's blade. And just before a ricochet, Jubei gave him a killing blow. And to this, I'm sure on his way to hell, the guy was like, there's no way you could have blocked that and killed me. How did you do it? That's one of those things you get sent off to hell with, those agonizing questions. So they win once again. The rest of the, the devils uh, fall back for now. They were obviously losing their own. And Jubei was like, dude, do you have a damn death wish? I told you this one was mine. Why do you insist on trying to kill yourself? And I have this bad habit myself. I can relate to where the ghetto's coming from because she has this code of honor like, dude, I owe you a debt twice now. Like, I'm trying to pay it back. 
But the problem is like, dude, don't commit suicide to ease your conscience. I don't need that on mine. So yeah, man. And she, I can, I can sympathize with it, but don't kill yourself trying to pay it back. Then I'm going to feel like shit being Jube, whatever. She was emotional. So, and she's letting on more feelings that she feels because Jube is the first man to actually make her feel like a person and not make her feel vulnerable. So here's the thing. If you're going to do that kind of stuff, do it in silence. That's all I'm going to say on that. So meanwhile, um, your Yumeharu was like, hey, we're losing guys left and right. I don't think we should make the shipment to Lord Gamma. Lord Gamma was like, no, we're going to do everything according to plan. Forget that noise. Just keep, we'll just keep killing them as they keep coming. The, the same old formula wasn't working, but I guess. So anyway, um, the ninja girl was upset. She was leaning against a wall. Jubei walked away this time. This time the assassin comes by, but Fujita's claw and kidnaps the ninja girl. So now we're fast forwarding to the point where we're getting close to Lord Gamma making his appearance. And so this is where the whole plot comes into like climax. You know what I mean? This is where it was a high when I first watched this. So he leaves a note. Hey, we got the ninja girl. You come to me in our terms. And, you know, and Daki one was like, it's obviously a trap that deters from what's going on. You can't be this dumb enough to actually fall for it. He's like, yeah, well, they're doing a good job. So you fool. You have to be a devil to be a devil. You have to be a devil in order to fight the devil yourself. That applies, but I don't know if this is the right context to use that. So Jubei was like, I owe her. I have to go. So it goes into this really eerie house. And keep in mind, this shadow, I don't know if, if you guys seen the episode of Samurai Jack where Samurai Jack faced off against the ninja and it was a black and white, it was the most black and white animated episode ever made back in the late 90s. I, a lot of this Cartoon Network stuff was influenced by this anime. Because there was a lot of black and reds, except in this clip right here of Samurai Jack, it was kind of related to that. I got that same vibe because I was watching it back then when I was still in high school. Anyway, so back to the subject. The ghetto was mind controlled, trying to be used as a tool to like obviously kill Jubei. Jubei nearly escapes another freaking assault on him. Let's go of his blade, and you know, the assassin gets killed by his own blade through the shadow, which was kind of anticlimactic. So I missed a step. When Dakiwan was like, hey, you want to, uh, no, he, I missed a step. So hey, listen to the ninja girl. If you want to cure Jubei, you're going to have to make love to him. That's the only way to use against the antitoxin. Dakiwan was an asshole. There was no cure. Dakiwan's one of those kind of guys who by any means necessary, get the job done somebody that you don't want on your side but you need on your side let's just say that so she, he tells to get all this but jubei doesn't know there is no antidote otherwise it will stop his drive so they make love and um no i'm getting ahead of myself sorry about this guys this has been a while off the top of my noodle so before they get to the ninja village she sends off a note Obviously, to the Lord and Master um, of the whole Ninja Clan, um, Huobaru Sakuki, Huobaru Sakuki, which was obviously the head of the whole Ninja Clan that got decimated in the beginning of the movie, and so they come with a huge army. She's like, "What are you doing? I'm sending off a note by a carrier pigeon to let the entire army know to come down here. We need more help. You know, we can't take this entire Ninja crew." And they were right because the Shogun of the Dark, which was Gamma's personal army was teaming up, no, excuse me, the Shogun of the Dark was teaming up with Lord Gamma. And Lord Gamma had all this gold and they were loading the gold into the boat to try to take over Japan. That's the overall master plot. If those two forces had a combined, it would have been a catastrophe against the entire Tokugawa government. They couldn't let that happen. So that's when the ninja girl made her move and got all the data she needed. The reconnaissance time was over and we expected to hear back from the, uh, from the Lord Master. So he arrives, but not what you think. It was Lord Gamma in, uh, I guess it's called um, a shadow clothes suit or an imposter suit, something. Because he was like in this scene right here, ha, 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 ha. And he was like a, this blob dude and shut shrunk down back to Lord Gamma and stabbed to ghetto. Jubei was pissed. This scene was fire. Like, Jubei was like, I don't care, Gamma! 
An army of ninjas starts hopping off rooftops, just marching to their doom. Jubei didn't give a shit. I'm surprised a blade didn't break over because he started shanking people left and right and stabbing them left. Just countless corpses everywhere. And of course, Lord Gamma's boy toy was like, you're Maharu. It was like, please, Lord Gamma, let me uh, consider this my set sail. Let me finish the job for you. And Gamma has his face on this like, dude, I don't give a damn. You know, this is bigger than you. Go, leave me. And all these ninjas hopping off the roof, just dying by the dozen. You know, that that loyalty, you know, that existed back then. Me, here's my point. You see a bunch of my comrades. You decimated 80 of my comrades, give or take. You took out at least five of the seven devils of Kimon already. Five? Did I get the number right? Yes, I did. No, six of the seven devils of Kimon, whatever. No, I didn't write it. It was five, not six, five. And so, yeah, man. And you expect me to follow that? Nah, you're not paying me enough, bro. So anyway, so Lightning Boy follows Jubei and he got him. He didn't play around with his food. He got the string around his neck, got him by surprise, started choking him out while electrocuting the dude. And what kills him? A spiteful, explosive chick. Never mess with a woman when she likes you and you give her mixed feelings because these two, and I forgot this clip entirely, but let's do a little recap. So these two were lovers, while this one had interest in this one, but this one didn't give them time of day, the end. Now we're, we're, brought, we're caught back up. She blows him up out of spite, and hopefully Jubei with him, except Jubei cut the string just in time, fell in the lake, or some kind of underwater uh, uh, cavern. Boom. He's like, oh, it seems like he walked in my trap. Looks like he's now queen of the devils. He threw his poem over her shoulder and Gamma's face here. When I saw this as a kid, it was the most disrespectful mm, cast off. So now it's down to the two of them. Um, but first, a touching moment of Jubei saying goodbye to his girl one last time. Remember, kissing her cancels out any poison. So that was pretty much it. Jubei puts the bandana on, saying goodbye for the last time. And we're off. And Jubei marches off on the horse into the night, full of anger and vengeance, and gets into the boat. He gets off easy enough, while uh, Dakuan takes off Explosive Girl and starts looking for the gold, of course, for more than one reason. The, the greedy bastard took an advance on his payment for his services, blows up the boat. And she was like, ha, you didn't expect, you didn't think that little shuriken would stop me, would you? Not at all. You're just the person I wanted to see. Singing a boat this size would be too much for me. Blows her up, which, oh my God. The, you don't carry your explosives experts onto a boat like that. That's just me. So now all the devils are dead. And here comes the climax. Gamma. Jubei finds Gamma. He is tipped. And yes, you'll probably recognize this scene from my intro here in my show. Gamma runs straight towards Jubei. Both run it all. Jubei dra drops out his sword, and Gamma has this cool, really sick arm blocker, like blade thing. Jubei slashing, slicing, made out of pure steel to no avail. Gamma knows, it looked like jujitsu, and beats the living life out of Jubei. Completely unnecessary. He's like, I am immortal. You can't beat me. Monologue and monologue. Jubei with that string on his hand again, pulls his sword and chops off Gamma's arm. He lets see how mortal you are with one arm. And Gamma still whoops him with one arm, beats the crap out of Jubei again. He's like, dude, you don't get it. You can't beat me. And Jubei, I don't know how his skull isn't cracked. With that little jewel in his forehead, headbutts Gamma until he just could not come back anymore. And Jubei even said it. I'll keep killing you no matter how many times you come back. <laughs> so Gamma dies, ironically, with his own gold in the sink of the ocean, you know, just drainage and all. So he was like, all right, so uh, I guess our deed is done. The ship explodes. You know, Jubei, the moment is won. They lost one of their own, but that's the way of the life of the ninja. He is like, 
Yeah, so here's your form of payment. You know, he just took the gold and sliced it, and he knew the old man had something on him. I'll take this as an advancement, old man, because he tried to lie and tell Jube that, oh, I don't have your payment at all. All the gold sank in the ocean. Bullshit. Jube jumps off the boat and starts wandering off like a vagabond again. And uh, that's my personal take on what happened and transpired on Ninja Scroll. Super sorry for my Japanese name pronunciation, was butchering it. I will, guys, as you can tell, I left you guys subtitles of each name. Saying the name properly. Out of respect, I have to start working on that more. So, tell me your thoughts on Ninja Scroll. Where were you at Ninja Scroll? Was it your very first anime that you reviewed? And thanks, by the way, for the comments here live. I appreciate it. I wanted to say some shout outs. Couldn't do it because it was going to you know, distract me. I'm trying to work on this live review thing. If you guys liked it, let me know what you guys thought about the live review here. Um, also, feel free to check out these shows. Oh, before that, feel free to uh, check out me in Comic-Con San Diego. I'm excited for it. I know I announced it already. Um, and I have another interview coming up on Combos and Crafts. Your boy's up to some awesome stuff. And uh, my birthday's coming up, so feel free to actually uh, hit that barcode that you saw in the beginning of the video. Send your boy a little something. All right. Peace.